Hey, you smell that? Steve, smell that? I think I smell <laughs> badass, man. Or is it just me? <laughs> Guys, That's I want to welcome man. you. I think I, in fact, I think it's this guy's – wait, I, I got to point this way. And I think it's this guy right here that I smell. Um, so I want to welcome you to the Daily Podcast. Uh, if you haven't watched the show before, it's a, a podcast that I'm bringing to you of – of bringing the go-getters, the, the the badasses I like to talk to, the people that go after what they want, and our experts and professionals in the field of health and industry. I am Eric Procknell, your host, and sitting, or I should say, videoing next to me is a, another Procknell, and how crazy is that? Steve Procknell, I welcome you, man. You, uh, so have my same last name and so people are probably going to be like yeah so i actually steve we I, we are second cousins so i believe my my father and your father are cousins from a family of 15 yeah if I'm not mistaken so um rose Procknell, right that's it yeah exactly there's there's a i actually posted this i don't know if you saw it but in buffalo in the first ward there is so close to downtown is a street that is dedicated to our great grandmother yeah Rose Procknell, who had 15 kids and like I, I in my post I was basically you know, let, alone, let alone 15 kids but she actually had enough time on her hands to leave a mark I know it's incredible I know it's uh it's beautiful to be to reconnect our families and then to hear all also all the stories of all of those kids and you know the the different things that they've done and the things that they've done in their lives is pretty incredible. Yeah. And, and, and what else has been incredible is, is, is kind of stumbling upon you. So uh, just a little backstory is I, I had to go, you know, I was out of, living out of Buffalo for a long time and went back just re so about three years ago to take care of my mother and father who were struggling mother with cancer, father, a uh, Vietnam vet struggling with PTSD and I was at a, a, a good friend of mine, so a close friend of mine that I've been, that lived right next door. I was at his family reunion. And then a reunion of my high school was next to me. And I started running into some of these girls that I hadn't seen in a while. And they knew me. And they were, it's through, through the conversation, they're like, do you know, you know, your cousin, Steve Procknell, is just like you. And I was like, whoa, Steve. Steve Procknell, and, and they're like, yeah, I take his yoga classes, and you do yoga, and you do training, and yeah. you're all about it, and you have a passion for it, and I see all the stuff you're posting, and he is just like you, and I'm like, really? So, in a short story, uh, to, 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 to make this quick, I, I googled his name, and then just came across you all over the place, man. You are, uh, I mean, I honestly have a notebook in front of me to make sure I don't miss anything. Your resume is extensive, my, my friend, and you've been everything from a, a, a fitness and health lecturer, a yoga instructor all around the world. And the, the, the first thing that popped at me was where like, I got to meet this guy was that you were doing yoga for vets and for ca so cancer patients at Roswell Hospital, mm -hmm. downtown Buffalo. I was doing that, yeah, and then like you said, uh, with with veterans at, for uh, suffering from PTSD and substance abuse at our, our local VA, and it, these were just opportunities that kind of came my way as I continued to just put my hand up for things, and then also continue to just be in be in the space of staying open to how can I offer what I do outside of studios. And so I think you call it like yogis and serve it, like right. So in, I know it's too as a yoga instructor that they want, which is, which is a good thing. They talk about the more that you give, the more that you get back in return. And, you know, I've done donation-based yoga where I got college kids coming up and do, you know, forward and what they, because we all, we all know that the good yoga instructors in the good places are, are sometimes a bit pricey. And, and so yeah. I, I'm guessing you, you did this, just went in there and, and you were doing it for free or... Well, so for Yogis and Service is a non-for-profit that I'm on the board on that Catherine Cucatone started and we've been working over the years and they, they put yoga into places that maybe can't afford it. So the teachers uh, receive um, 
you know, a little bit on par of whatever city salary for or, or price per class that they would receive for a class. And we go in and teach those classes. So at Roswell Park or the VA or the correctional facilities that I teach at, I, that's who I do the, the teaching yoga through. Yeah, now I gotta ask you, I mean, <laughs> and, and I, I was asking about a guest that also did yoga, especially for men and, and you know, my father going through it and I remember when my, when my father was going through this and a long time ago, my mother with her anxiety and they knew how I was into meditation and did all this stuff. Yeah. And they started asking me a bit about it more so for my mother. And so I was pulling all my books out and, you know, they would always be like, you know, Hey, why did we find you laying on the floor? <laughs> you know, yeah. what the hell were you doing? And we were knocking on the door for about 15 minutes and then they kind of understood why. But I remember talking to my father when he was, you know, going through rehab after could, couldn't talk to him for the first three weeks. But then one of the first questions I asked him, I said, dad, you know, what are the tools that they're giving you to, to help you when you get out of here? And on the phone, he, which set me back, he said, everything you, you tried to tell me a long time ago. And I was like, yeah. what's that? Breathing, relaxing, thinking, instead of that stimulus response of trying yeah. to break that. You know, and, and, and for a, a strong type like my father and these, these guys, these veterans, you know, did you find it hard to, 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 to connect with them with that or, or, or for them to kind of connect with yoga? Well, what I would say is I would share my story with them. And I would say, look, guys, this is the last thing that I thought would work for me. I come back from a background in, you know, college sports and growing up playing all the different sports I grew up I was in the gym at 15 years old like I had all of those things where like this is what you do you push hard and flexibility mobility patience slowing things down wasn't really the thing that I had right. so it was like okay the same level of thinking that got you into the problem is not going to get you out of the problem so we have to do something different and so I started to look at, I was continuing to get injured in, uh, I was, at that time I was doing triathlons and marathons. And so sometimes with guys, I'll talk about the things that I've done just so, so they can kind of be like, you know, I'm not a granola-ish type of person. Like I, I get out there and I still get after it for whatever that is to me. And look, like, trust me, this, this helps me. And I've also seen it help a lot of other guys and just try it on. Like, if it's not for you, fantastic close the loop because then if a doctor or a medical professional says hey try yoga you can be like look you know what i tried that out a couple times it wasn't for me and though if you can keep the growth mindset and the open mindset of continuing to try things till you get to the thing that works for you like you're going to run into something and maybe it is yoga maybe it's tai chi maybe it's pilates maybe it's meditation maybe it's wim hof breath i don't know what it is but at least if you're continuing to stay in that state of mind you might get there. And yoga for me was like, it, it, it just got to that point where like that made sense. And so then to me, it's also people don't know how much people don't want to know how much you care till they care how much you know. And so I'm saying like, look, I really care about this stuff and I want to share it with you and just see what happens. And I feel like that, that response, as opposed to like, you have to do this or like, this is what you need to do. Like just try it out. And then your experience is your own. And then also for me, I started with, I couldn't cross my, I couldn't sit cross-legged. I couldn't touch my toes. Like I had no flexibility. So they couldn't go with like, oh, well, you're already flexible. Or, you know, cause so many people go with like, you have to be flexible to do yoga. Well, the, right. the best part is I would say to them is like, think about this. You're going to give yourself something you've never had before. Mobility and flexibility. If we're just looking at the physical practice. And then if the breath work, and then say, so many individuals talk about sleeping or relaxation, we're going to give you something at the end here. That's also going to give you a way to relax. And so that's when the kind of the ears picked up to saying like, yeah, I'll try that out. So yeah. for me, I'd give like the one minute elevator pitch, <laughs> hope that it works and yeah. let's say, all right, let's go for it. And then just continuing to re-enroll when I'd watch them come out or maybe want to give up a little bit. How do I nudge that person? Just, just stick with it a little bit, begin again, begin again, begin again. And then towards the end, you know, like, wow. And I, I never thought it was like that or, that was really amazing. Or I saw this, or I felt this, or this was my experience. And then for me, I don't judge any of that, whatever their experience was, 
I just let them share that not right or wrong, their experience, and that allows them to continue to continue to do it. Right. Now, I remember when I first took one of your yoga classes and the first thing that I noticed was that just the way that you presented it and almost like, like same thing, like you were talking about right there as like a, as, as story as in, in connecting with your experiences and basically being human, you know, and, yeah. and you divulging some of the, some of the things and, you know, the trials and tribulations that you went through and it does, it really does make the, the person that's, that's taking it connect and, 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 and really get into it and open them up to it. And so to, to you know, to hear you say that, so yeah. were you, was that something now, did you kind of get them going first or that's something you just was like, let them told that story right off the bat? It's a, well, when I would walk into a class where everybody's like, so for example, the VA, that was a, a group that would, there would be new people every two to four weeks, depending on who was in the program. So right, each right, time right. I had to re-enroll the group into that. And so I would, depending on how many guys were new and not, because sometimes the, the guys that were there would just say, hey, like, you really want to take this class. So I wouldn't have to put in as much uh, in the beginning to kind of introduce what we were about to do if the other guys said, like, hey, you know, you really want to take this to really help out. So sometimes I'd lean on it a little bit more. Um, but, you know, like with yoga, to me, like the proof's in the pudding. Like I know that, it, like the amount of times and places that I've taught, I know yoga works. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody, but I will say there's one thing that I know is tried and true and like this practice works. It doesn't matter if you're four years old or 80 years old, there is something for you in this and it, it, it will work for you if you stay, stick with it long enough. Yeah. And I, and I talked a little bit about this in the, in the prior cast too, about as an elementary teacher and I have my kinder and they, and they love it. And I'm really out in the middle of nowhere. And so what I would do is I would show them videos of, I think it was yoga day where there was just honestly thousands of, and the mats are all, and I would just let them see, Hey, look how many people are doing this. You know, this is, yeah. this is not just weird. And you're, you know, and there's, a, and if you see that that many people are doing it, there's, and for, that many years right so i would yeah. have them like especially my fourth graders calculate you know kind of when they started yoga and where it is now and you see that it's yeah. been around for thousands of years that there's a benefit of it well and here's the other thing that i don't think enough people talk about that makes yoga different is you can't measure it Every, so much in fitness and i'm i'm huge on this because i've been in it long enough you can't measure you know, you could wear a watch, I guess, to burn calories if you really wanted to, <laughs> but it's not about reps. It's not about weight. It's not about pace. It's not about any of those things where you can get in your head and create some sort of measurement to it. And what do most people say the, are, are the best state to be in is flow state. Well, the easiest way to be in flow state is when you drop everything else, you drop time, you drop measurements, you drop the pass or fail, and you're just in you know what we call the present moment and yoga offers that you're not competing with the person next to you you have no idea how much like if they were ranking themselves of one to ten of effort level you have no idea how they're pushing themselves they don't have a screen at the top that says they're in first place and you're in last place or whatever that is there's no printout at the end to say who got what place and it's not pass or fail it's literally up to you pose to pose moment to moment to be in the experience and in the world now where we know the temperature all the time. We know the time all the time. We know the news all the time. We know everything all the time. Yoga is one of those things is you don't, you don't know who's going to be there. Uh, you know, you don't really know how it's going to go for you. And it's just that beautiful thing of just being the natural self of going back to that kid like ways of just staying open. When you were a kid, you just ran outside and played. And you were done when you were done. You didn't go like, let me look at my steps. Let me count how many things I did. That's why kids don't get so obsessive about those things because we've measured, started to measure everything. And when we do it right, it's a pass. And when we don't, we dwell on it and it becomes a fail for most people. Wow. And I know that for myself, one of the major things that I've stopped doing is I don't count and measure anything anymore. Now you talked about being in the moment and, I feel like, I, and I'm going to use my mother as, a, as an example. It, so one of the, one of the nice things about the cancer was it kind of put, my mom was so hard to get into doing anything and I would just be yeah. every time on her and, and cancer really kind of pushed her with her eating and, and then 
you know, exercising and I got her into yoga and she still does it to this day, every day. She gets yeah. up early, you know, and of course, when I'm there, I'll say, did you find your breath? And she's like, no. And yeah. I'm like, well, that's the most important thing, you know, and she'd say, yeah. Um, well, that's what the teacher says. I'm like, I, I go, you know what they're talking about that mom of being why that's important. And she's, and cause my mom is one that's always in her head Yeah. To get, her, to get her out of there. I said, the best thing about yoga is it's not just the physical benefits, but the mental benefits of it far exceed that. And, you know, you, you were talking about being in that flow state where you are, you know, focused on exactly what you're doing at that time in the and the, the benefits and the value of that. So I, I guess my question would be to you, Steve, like for somebody like my mother or somebody that's taking your yoga, you know, I know for you, but like what would be some advice for them or, or how would you as an instructor kind of get them to bring their attention or to, to, to kind of put more effort into that? I'm sure you probably have those type A people that are just like, at your thing and you can just you already tell they're like even you're sitting them in dead body pose or something and they're yeah. just ready to hop up and get the hell out of there and yeah <laughs> so in the style that i teach baptist yoga drishti is the focus gaze and that's essentially what we say the keystone is and and so what do what do i need to have people take their attention off of and what do i need to have to put their attention on so if i can see someone looking in different directions is okay do they need to focus on their breathing or do they need to focus on a specific point in front of them so they're completely here in the moment because if they are type a or you can see them thinking all over how do i enroll them to get present right here into the pose and then so that they can see that and so on the same point we call it stira sukha asana strength and softness do i need to bring in a little bit more strength so they get present because sometimes when you make the class a little harder it's hard it's more challenging to think of the outside world if the pose is really hard if you're holding a pose or do I need to bring in a softness so then they can also connect to themselves there? So that's us as yoga teachers. That's the, the play of be, being uh, an impactful uh, style teacher is what's needed in the moment for the group that's in front of you. Yeah. I mean, so, so I mean, you're reading the room at all times and just looking to see. Yeah. Yeah. The way that I would teach at, at, at Roswell Park at the cancer hospital is different than I would teach in a prison. Yeah, based on what though what the individual needs or the group needs, and, and I mean, shit, prisoners. You're thinking, you know, so I was just talking about how hard it might be with uh, veterans, but you know, what's what's been the overall response there? Well, in my and, experience, and, and number number uh, the other thing I want to ask you is like, you know, going into that, how are you? What was going through your mind? You know. I mean, I love to say that it was it was easy in the beginning, but it wasn't. I mean, I've I've never been into a maximum security jail before, and uh, what an what an honor and an opportunity to be able to walk in there to a place that most people don't get to get get to to see on on their own. And yeah, it was. I don't know. The only thing that I know about, uh, say, a maximum security jail is what I would see on you know Netflix or on the news and stuff. So I I, I didn't want to make any preconceived things, but I don't really know much about it and you know the guys that signed up um, a lot of them they'd never taken yoga before and also at the first place that I that I taught they were an honor block so like there's also a reason that they're there they don't just they're not throwing me in the middle of the yard and say like recruit some people to teach yoga <laughs> you know I'm, I'm thankfully in a very what I would consider a safe environment uh, in that space and that took me a little bit to feel comfortable like I always tell the story like it was scary for me to lie in Shavasana you know, on my back at the end of class, knowing, you know, for my, my own psyche at the time of like, well, like anything can happen, you know, at this point. And though I, I, you know, as I earned the trust with those guys, like, look, I'm just here to help you. And that's that human connection of those guys realize that I don't need to be there. I'm there on my own. Right. And I'm there to teach you some things, hopefully about your mind and your body to give you some time and space. And so with those guys, a lot of the things that they may not get a lot of quiet time, they may not get a, a lot of time on their own. And they have, you know, workout facilities there where they're, you know, using just like weights and, and, and pushing force. How then can I do the opposite? So once again, strength and softness, how can we add a little bit of softness in there so you can have that balance for yourself? And so I would see those guys, they would, they would drop their guard down. And that's when I also realized that 
for the most part, you can find kindness in almost anybody. Because at the end of class, those guys would say, Steve, thanks so much for being here. Or like, that was amazing. Or they would share their experience on what they felt. Or they would get along better with the guys next to them. I've seen guys assist other guys in a pose or recruit their friends to come. And so for me, I feel like I'm helping out and yoga's helping out just create a little bit more community and connection through using yoga. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a great practice. Not, you know, that's going through my head for, for somebody in there in a tight quarters and to, to, to allow them to kind of to, to have that mental strength and to, yeah. and to put that mind somewhere in a positive place. And, and, and not just with those prisoners, but also for the veterans and um, the, the cancer patients, I'm sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. That, yeah, and that was, again, the first thing that, I, that just attracted to me to see that you were doing that and just, I mean, oh my God, it's that, how awesome that is. And, how and Eric, let's, let's call a spade, let's call a spade a spade. The thing is, is like, I'm an open book and going in there as a powerful um, or a strong, you know, confident dude and saying like, look, it's okay to kind of share your feelings a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be a little bit vulnerable. Like, it's okay that like, cause if I would open up the conversation and talk about anything in my life, then it allows them to let their guard down too. And like that helps move the needle forward too, that we don't need to hold on to everything. And it's okay to, to move through stuff. Like I'm in a, a, a sutras group and we talk about tapas, which is heat in yoga, but tapas as we were referring to is moving through something. And in a yoga class, I'm sure as you experienced, you can move through something in a yoga class that it could be a, a life thing that you move through, or it could be just that thing that day. And even those guys in the prison, I don't know what happened in the morning. What they go through in one morning, I have no idea. But if I can help them move through something and then they can talk about it or experience that, like to me, I know that that's really helping out. Yeah. I mean, it really has been. Uh, and yoga in my life has, has allowed me to, honest to God, turn bad situations into good and make me literally look at those a whole, in a whole different lens. And yeah. it's, you know, I think it's just that, that aspect of taking that time. I would always tell my, 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 my clients and my students, you know, that, I, you know, yoga is working when you have that conversation with yourself. It, yeah. As crazy as that sounds, but let's just say you're at a red light and you're like, Oh my, Oh, my posture is bad. I'm like, that's yeah. that, that talk to you or, you know, Hey, why am I so pissed off about this dude just cut me off? And why am I still holding on to that? And the emotional aspect of, you know, why am I so angry for all the time where, because I think that's the best thing about that practice is the more that you take that time and you are in that moment, it allows you to be in that moment 24 hours after that. Yeah. And so you catch those things. And you and I being able to have this conversation and we're not just talking about what we're bench press. You know, it's crazy because, you know, you know how I got into yoga the same as you. I, I was training down in Miami, Florida. And I mean, that's what I was, and I was killing it. My yeah. clients were stacked up and I, and a guy ran into me. Well, I actually ran into three cars into me and I, I you know, lost 15% functioning on the right side of my body, nerve damage. And, 23 years old I'm like because just like you I'm like this is I was depressed I, I walked yeah. around like a nine-year-old man and um a yoga instructor and it was it was Bikram at that time and she because me yeah. you, me and her would talk and she said you know why don't you take one of my classes now I want to say that was it was part of the part of the reason and I'm like I you know I, I can barely damn walk I mean how the hell am I supposed to you know, yeah. put myself in a pretzel because that's what I thought of yoga. Right. And then, you know, she's like, well, I'll put you right up in front. I'll modify everything. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> you know? Right. I, that's like, yeah. that's like our worst nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. I, exactly. I put, put me in the, the invalid in front, but I was like, you know what? The same as you, I'll try it. Because yeah. if they told me to put a pink tutu on and it was going to make my, and it really did lead me because as a, college soccer player and working with strength coaches and just like you everything is just hard heavy fast explosive like you know on that soccer field that practice field where you're giving 100 percent but to slow down and I remember the one, first thing was where we were supposed to do like a standing head to foot and I couldn't even balance on one foot and that's when it dawned on me I said right. all right maybe I need to focus on this right here yeah 
And, and so, and then with that too, and you already stated this, the, the community. So I, at first I felt like, and I'm sure everybody did, and it's crazy to hear myself say this because I'm always fighting this with my clients. You know, the clients that come in there, they don't want to go in a room with me because they feel like people are watching them. They're uncomfortable. Yeah. And I'm like, here, I felt the same way as them. And yeah. everybody would never think that as me because I'm always like, I don't give a shit about any kind of guy. But that thought in my mind, but it, you know, it was quickly for, for me to get over that, to be like, hey, I'm hurt. I'll, I'll do whatever I need to do to break yeah. down. But then totally. to have that community that you talked about, that because, and you'll attest to this, that and, and me as well, you get the same people come in. And it really does get that. It's a, it's a very comfortable feeling. And when somebody new comes in, you know, I mean, it's so a, a welcoming environment. Exactly. I remember sitting one day uh, outside the yoga studio at lunch with a friend of mine that, that doesn't come to the studio and he watched the next class come in and out. And he said, I've never seen people so happy to go in and also so happy to go out of the studio. And I was like, I know it doesn't happen. Like you go to the gym, you know, you know, some people are happy going in, some people are happy going out, but at a yoga studio, I mean, people go in happy and they might even come out even happier. And it's just like, what happened in that room? And that's to me, that's why there's, there's, there's nothing like it. And like you said, people are welcoming because everybody remembers their first class. And you know, it, it's that space of like, yeah, we, we got some space for you here exactly how you are. And it's perfect. Yeah. And then and another thing that you have grown in Buffalo as a community is the November project. And it's, um, you know, and you can jump in here, but I know it's came out of Boston, right? And it was um, yep. a group of guys that basically, so it's in other, to, to basically bring the health and offer workouts for people in the city. And it's designed, which I've watched you be, you know, you're at Buffalo Bills Stadium. You're at the uh, Sabres Stadium. You're at the courthouse on the steps and yeah. all these awesome historical places. And you have hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of people. And some of the pictures, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can, I want to find one too where, and I think that's the one I'm going to use of you, where you're yeah. in a sea of people. Yeah. You know, so, you know, how did, how did you get started in that? So the funny story, I was looking, I had been doing some free community stuff uh, the years leading up to that. And I was, I was teaching some free yoga things and I was looking to do something different that involved community. And I felt like I was ready to try on something else. And I was dating a girl that was living in Edmonton and she went to this thing called the November Project, but it was in February. And so I was like, what is this thing? And so then I looked it up and I, I realized that it's 52 weeks a year, always outside, always on Wednesdays. And some cities do it three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So for myself, I travel a lot. And I was like, I can't do 52 weeks a year every Wednesday in my city. I'm going to be gone. So I put it on the shelf. And then it just kept coming back into my, my headspace. And people kept bringing it up. And so finally, I listened to a podcast with one of the founders on it. And I just said, shame on me if I don't do this much is given much is expected Steve your city needs this I called up my one friend and I was like hey Jason Jerome and I was like dude let's do this thing you know let's go for it you got to pledge first it's kind of you know they don't give it to you right away the title you start with your own name and then they just watch you and then once you build it if you kind of earn your stripes and your street cred then they pass you as a November project so we started and we were both in the community already so I feel like we had a little bit of an easier go than most if someone just that's like a lawyer decided to start this. And so we sat, we had some really good numbers in the beginning, but then the, the challenge was how do you keep the numbers? And I had never taught boot camp classes. I was a yoga teacher and I trained myself. I, like managing 100, 200, 300 people in a small area and having to be fun, having to be organized, having to be creative, building community, having everybody seen in a 40 minute period. I was like, I don't, I remember after I started building, I'm like, I don't know if we're gonna do this right. And we, you know, but the same thing is, it's like sink or swim and, and just go for it. And if your intentions are good and like we, we were giving our best to do it. And so over the years, and I feel that Buffalo is a city like this and there's other cities in, in the U S and around the world, it's free. We, there's no ask. You never need to pay for anything. We're never going to ask you for money and all you have to do is show up. And so in a city like Buffalo, that's where we've been able to, 
to get things from the city as in like to get into the stadiums. They made November Project Buffalo Day, uh, I think it was two years ago for one of our anniversaries. So we've been in all the stadiums and the community has been so nice to us because we're literally doing this from the kindness of our hearts. And the time that we put in is, is our own time. And I also feel like, cause I've done service, you know, community service, service around the world, service in third world countries. And it's also time and those types of services are great. And though we can also look in services as different, all services don't have to be at a soup kitchen, which is still a great thing to do. But I know that my skills are best served doing this kind of work. And so I decided that this is my way of to be of service is to give back like what I'm good at. And so let me do this for a couple hours a week. I got to invest some time in this and this is what I have to offer. And so I look at it as, as this is part of the service that I give back. And that's been a big part of my life. Man, I think I, I think that's an awesome thing, and you know both both we can attest that Buffalo's food is is incredible. I always gotta watch myself when I go back home because yeah. I'll, I'll put ten pounds on real quick because it's yeah. just and it's known for that. And and Buffalo's also been known because I've watched where they rate the cities and health, and you know Buffalo is way yeah. down here. It's not a Denver, Colorado, or anything like that. And so it's awesome to see that you are doing that. And I feel like what I can that what that would bring in is people that are out of town, and you know they always talk about Buffalo being rejuvenated, and it really has. It has come a long way. I mean, every time I come home, I'm like, this place is awesome, and there's so yeah, much. Yeah, man, stuff I wanted to, to make Buffalo like I, I want. I love the city, and I was sick of getting slack from people like going away to school and being like, you live in Buffalo or whatever. I was like, our city deserves to be cool. We deserve to have the same things that other cities have. I hated people going away and being like, every other city has cool things. And so if I can make some sort of contribution to either make our city healthier or have cool things, it like, cause what happened in November project, there's 52 cities around the world. People were like, Buffalo, them fools are crushing it. And like, when you have cities like New York and LA and these other places just being like, Buffalo is, looks dope. You know? tough baby <laughs> and they look really fit you know what i mean because that was one of my problems too is that i would see you know what I, i've said this before is i would go to the terminal the buffalo terminal of whatever when i was flying back home and you could always people were a little bit overweight looked a little tired and it just made me sad that we have great people in the city but we were falling way behind in the health and wellness part and it's like if i can help out a little bit move the needle for whatever that is for a person. We don't need to be the fittest, but if we can just be a little healthier, each individual, then I feel like I'm doing my part. Absolutely. And what a great thing to be a star of that. Cause I feel that, that you got that ball rolling and man, it, 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 to keep that going would be awesome. Cause I really feel like something like that. I mean, just for myself, you know, being home and being like, if I'm, if I am home in the winter time, <laughs> which usually, yeah. usually it's rare, but that would be something that I would seek out. And, and, and love to do because there are hundreds of people in the freezing ass cold yeah. killing it. And I mean, and I always use the terminology buff tough because I'm, I'm like you, man. I rock out. I, if I see somebody with a Buffalo hat on, no matter where I'm yeah. at, or even if they drive by me, I'm like, yeah. So yeah. I, it's crazy because I was just in the gym. I was in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I wanted to change up gym. And as soon as I walked in there, a dude had his buffalo, and I had my earphones, yeah. and he did, and I went, yeah. just like that. And he just was like, hell, you know, and that's right. the thing about buffalo people, and it, they really are. It's, it's You can have a, a connection with somebody instantly when they know that. And it's so awesome for you to, to do that and, and have that pride in buffalo because I I do so as well. And every time I've had – I've had – numerous guests on the show already and i always started off being it must be something in the water because there's another badass from buffalo yeah, yeah. buff tough and and speaking of buff tough people i know that you've because either a text message or something you had told me roger that yeah and roger that brings me to, to a buffalo native and born and raised david goggins yeah who is known as the the the, the, the basically the toughest man on earth and when I read that book, and I think that's probably the same book that, that, that you did, um, I was just, when I first, from Williamsville, that's where you're from too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you're Williamsville East or North? He grew up, he, I went to South. He grew up in the Williamsville East District. South? Well, his first five years, yeah. 
Oh, you bastards you used to always beat us in playoffs in soccer. <laughs> totally. Damn it. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> All the time. Or every time we played Williamsville, we knew it was going to be a game. Um, but, yeah, to see that and then to see that you, you know, basically read a lot of the same stuff. I mean, that, that man that I just – if I see a picture of him, I don't even have to hear his voice, but how, how motivating that is. And it's the same thing, honestly, God, Steve, when I watch, when I, when you post something on Instagram, when you throw, put something on Facebook and, and a lot of times you'll be hiking or um, just talking about your parents, you know, that this was their anniversary and the way that you put it in story for and, and it really does connect. And man, it, it motivates the hell out of me, man. And I'm sure a lot of people, and I've seen the comments, but the th those little things that you do, this looking at same thing that we talk about, you know, I think you mentioned your parents, but what are some of the things that 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 motivate you, that 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 inspire you? Is it like you are always kind of searching for, you know, looking for books like David Goggins and things like that? And well, I will say that I I I, I now know the value of life. I feel like I didn't put it into perspective, you know, my maybe say 20 and before, but going through loss, like losing relatives, um, having my father be being sick, you know, for the past 11 years on and off and seeing how precious time is. And also just a gift to give back to my parents of like, they sacrificed so much for me and my brothers as kids and shame on me if I don't, if I don't use this opportunity here that I was given all of the tools, especially when we're in this, this heightened time right now with um, Black Lives Matter and um, you know, equality and all of this. I mean, full disclosure, I was given every single opportunity to be successful. And I wanna make sure that I use that in a positive way. And every single day, can I be the best version of myself? Am I, am I helping people out? Am I improving? And I'm also am I making my parents proud. And so those are the things like, if, if, I'm, if I'm not, you know, on point with what I'm doing, I have those voices of Steve, like, you, you need to take advantage of this time and, and take advantage of the things that you were given and do good with that. Because it's really easy to not do good with those things. And I, at the end of the day, I, I want to know that I live this life, the best that I could that, that the book, the story of my life, for myself, that, that that would be a book that some people would read. And every single day, I'm making a page inside of that book. And when one chapter ends, because it's going to do, okay, next chapter, maybe that was a good chapter. Maybe it wasn't. Hopefully it was. But I'm going to continue building this book. And at the end, if somebody looks back, they're like, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd read that book. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm creating every day. I love that, man. I, and, and, and reading the, the write-up that you wrote about your, your parents being together for, for 44 years. Yeah. Right? And, and man, it, it, my, I was just telling we were talking a little bit before we started it. My parents in, for 52 and how rare that is. And, um, you know, I think in, in that write up, you had mentioned something about kind of about were you, were you the black sheep of the family? Did you, uh, did you middle that? child, man, for real. Yeah, <laughs> me too. My mom used to always. And so I read that. I was like, there's another connection. Yeah. Um, I've apologized multiple times to my parents and. You know, these are always, my mom said, all eyes were on Eric, you know? And yeah. so, but at least you did that. See, like, I know that yoga was the thing that gave me the opportunity. The first teacher train that I went to, I called my parents and said, when I get home off the plane, we're going to sit down. Yeah. And it was like, I gave myself my own intervention of saying, you know what? I'm really sorry for these things that I did. And will you forgive me? And so now I have these conversations that are so real and pure with my parents and they might come to me for things, but I needed to clean up that mess of like owning my past and owning those things. So now my relationship with my parents is so different. And that to me is, is a great gift too, is just owning it, asking for forgiveness or, or appreciating people in the moment. Uh, I, 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 the same, I remember, Growing up, and you know, my brother, both my brother, we all had our driver's license, and of course, they would drive all the time, and not me. And I threw a fix. I thought it was, you know, that they just wouldn't let me. In. And then I know why I, I wouldn't let me try to be, be driving. And my yeah. brother would say, "I know you," but to see that, and you do the same thing. But I did same thing. I sat him down, and then it really did make a connection with them. 
And around that same time, like I remember my grandfather passing away and him trying to, it was myself, and my younger brother, and he was basically telling us this, this is the last time we're going to see you. And we kept blowing it off. I mean, we hadn't really experienced yeah. a lot of death yet. Being like, you know, Pop, we're going to see you. And we yeah. did it. And it was one of my worst regrets of my life. And I told myself, yeah. and it was after that, that I, because we really it wasn't a family that said, I love you. Right. But every time after I hung up the phone, and it, of course, but even with my brothers, they're still stuck back and they won't say it back to me. But yeah. shit lets That's me okay. know that I'm not going to make that same mistake anymore. Yeah. You know? I, I agree. My, my late aunt lost her husband in 9 11. And, you know, he went to work that day and they said goodbye to each other on the phone. Um, and she would always make a pact at our house that she would never leave our house after that or with anybody without saying goodbye. And I know, you know, in the society, you know, I've been in this world where it's like cool to do the Irish goodbye and all these other things. And the truth is, is you don't ever know if you're going to see that person again. And I took something and it's similar to what you're saying is, is I always make sure that I tell my parents or my brothers or the people that I love, I love them. And I make sure that I say goodbye now because it's not cool to dip out anymore. It's actually really cool for, for the people that I know that they know how I feel about them all the time and not over the top, but just saying yeah. it. And that's a practice because as you know, it's probably awkward the first yeah. time you said I oh, love yeah. you to your brothers. So, so it's a practice of not making it weird. And, and, whether, and, and you don't need to say I love you, whatever that is for you, which is fine. And, and, but just you doing it right off. And so it's normal. And then that becomes just the way of being. And, and the best part is, that spreads because then they receive that. And, and, and even if your brothers don't say it, I'm sure they still appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and, and then I'm, I'm thinking about the, you know, you're talking about sink or swim that you kind of, and a few of our guests kind of said the same thing, you know, you, you kind of just jumped into yoga. It's not, and the same thing with Namaste that we had on here. He said he took it a couple of times and also they just threw him in there. Yeah. You just got thrown into the November project. I mean, these are, these are not little things, man. These are yeah. massive undertakings. And so is that kind of a, like how you feel that, that, that Steve Prognell works best is just going to hell and, and getting in there and doing it? Well, I feel like sports taught me that you know, playing baseball as a kid, like you either get on base or you don't, and you got to get back up to bat or you have a bad game, you play again and you just stay with it and stay with it and stay with the work. So for myself, you know, it's, it's like public speaking. How do you get better at public speaking? The only way to do it is to practice it. And so it, it, Gary Vee has a quote, like you can't read about push-ups. The only way to get better at push-ups <laughs> is doing push-ups. If you're not good at them, you just got to do it. And so for me, if I attach no meaning to it, however I do, and go up there and just go for it, act as if, you know, not act as if in a cocky standpoint, but just act as if like you belong there. The same way you walk into a yoga class, like for the first time, you belong there. It, it doesn't matter who else is there. And, and it takes so much courage. I mean, you could read all the Brene Brown books, the vulnerability of it, but it takes courage. And when people see someone giving their best, with no ego towards it. I mean, that helped, that's powerful. And you can walk away just saying like, I did the best that I can. And then there's also no pressure. You just go up there and go for it. And then you start to build positive momentum over and over again. I think it's almost harder once you get better at it to keep and maintain that. Cause the growth, that's amazing. But then how do you, how do you maintain that? That's the work too as well. Right. And, and, and on, that, on that subject, like Steve, what, so the Daily Reps podcast, we always dive into the daily habits. And now one thing that, that I, I got from you, honest to God, was, was and I was never a morning person, win the morning, yeah. win the day. And now my ass is up at three. Sometimes, I, honestly, God, I'll look at the clock and it'll be like 2.30, 2.50. I'm like, come on, man. You know, <laughs> is it too early? You know, this is getting a little bit crazy, man. I understand yeah, you got a yeah, lot of shit you need to yeah. get done and you got yeah, that passion. Yeah. But it truly is something about getting the ball rolling, that massive momentum of things getting accomplished from making your bed, from doing the journaling, from yeah. taking a cold shower, from putting a smoothie in your body. And it's to the point where I love it so much because I already, before I have gone to work, know that I've got what I need to get done for the day. 
And it was you just that, that kind of set me on that path. You know, now I have my habits and I right. mentioned a few of them, but what, what are, what are your, what are your daily habits that you, that you feel are, have been most successful for you that you well, continue to do? Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, for me, it's still getting up early, relatively speaking. I don't have, I'm not Jocko Willick where it's like the alarm is at 4.30 and he, he posted on Instagram all the time. You know, most mornings I wake up between somewhere between 4.45 and 6, depending on what I have to get done and also what time I went to bed the night before. Um, and I always, I have a meditation spot in, in my apartment and I, I sit and do breath work first that just involves usually like a four, seven, eight breath count or box breathing. And I finish with a little bit of TM and, and a meta meditation by, I'm not big into prayer anymore, but like I'll do the meta meditation where I put out peace and love to the people that are really important in my life and then the world. And then also people that I, maybe I don't get along with as much. If you want to Google that, you can look meta meditation. Uh, you'll find out how to guide yourself through that. I do that every day. And then I take a cold shower. That's been something in my routine for five or six years. I love the fact that it doesn't really get easier. It's overcoming a fear every single day, especially in cold winters in Buffalo. Like I don't even go hot, I go right into cold, you know? And, and if you had a bad dream or a bad day or anything, you can't think about anything else except it's really cold right now. And it helps, it turns everything on, your lymphatic tissue, your metabolism, everything is turned on. And then all of a sudden I'm ready to go. So I'll, I'll get into some yoga, or movement, whatever I feel like doing, depending on the seasons, because in Buffalo, the seasons dictate a lot. So I'll figure out some sort of movement depending on what my day is. And that's really how I'll start it there. And then depending on what I have going on, I might scale it up if I have more time in the morning, or just those three things will get me going in the, in the right direction. I don't eat before those things. I like to do movement without eating. That's just, that's evolved for me. I used to always eat something beforehand, but now the last couple of years, um, I feel like I feel better without having anything in my stomach. Wait, and, you... and then when the things start to come at me, I choose how I do my morning. So when things maybe don't go my way, I've built myself up a lot higher that if I take a couple knocks down, it's not all the way down. I'm choosing how I then react based on I'm physically, spiritually, and mentally turned on. So I'm armored up in a way that when things come at me, like I'm good to go, not in a fighting way, but just in an accepting and receiving way that like, it's almost that David Goggins thing of like, can't hurt me. It's going to take a lot more to push me off of my balance at that point. If I did the necessary things in the morning to set myself up. Yeah. I, I remember I used to, I worked for a behavior school and I, <laughs> my, being home with my parents, right? Because they're wondering why the hell my ass is up. And guess what I was going to do, Steve? I was up at 4.30 in the morning to go take your yoga class. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm filling my water bottle up. My, usually my dad's the first one up. And they're all, I, of course, wake up. Because I remember I, they're such light sleepers. And when I used to yeah. sneak in the house late at night when I was younger, I had to know those spots in the house, not to hit, where they would wake up and but wait you know filling up my water bottle and they're like why are you getting up why why do you need to take could not understand why i got up at 4 30 in the morning yeah. to take yoga because it's especially to go in with these behavioral kids because i didn't want to bring anything in there with me that they could that nothing they said or you know what i mean and just like you like to, to knock me off balance and, yeah. and for me to, to to lash out that at them at any moment and the thing is, is I've built so many good relationships with these kids. You know, I, I love them. And they're some of the best people I've ever come across. But I needed that, especially to, to be able to go into that situation, you know, where my mom and dad thought I was nuts. And they literally kept saying that. And I just kept telling them, like, you know what? I'm sorry, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going. I'm going to, I'm going to go. Yeah. You know, but. Um, well, it. It's like what Tony Robbins says that, you know, our brains are hardwired for survival. Happiness is our job. And we're not really taught that. That's not something we're taught in school. It's not something we're taught in college is what is, what's your plan to be happy. And that for me, the morning routine, whatever that is for each individual, create a plan that's going to give you the best setup to stay happy throughout the day. Because if I just wake up and just hope that the day is going to go well, that's just a losing game over and over again, because 
I mean, our world right now with the amount of information that can get thrown our way, it's not like when your parents grew up where they only got the news when the newspaper came on, they only got the news when it came on at the nightly time, or they only got conversations based on who called them or their direct conversations with the people around them. Now you could have 15 text messages come in in the time that we're talking. You could have DMs come in, Facebooks, Instagrams, all of this information that can throw you off of your balance. And so what is the plan in that? And that's why our parents, they, they might be a little bit different in, in what they do. And though, as our generation just has to have a little bit of a different strategy based on what we're all experiencing in this completely new world of the way that information is thrown at us in our decision fatigue, I mean, can, can just be so overwhelming. Yeah, another, I know that that's one thing that you, I mean, I always see on your thing is win the morning, win the day. And I mean, like I said, I connected with that a lot. But there's another thing that I see on there that you talk, you always will say finding Neverland. Yeah. And so, I mean, to me, Neverland is Peter Pan, right? So yeah. of how to stay young, right? It, exactly. So I'll give you the story of that. My late aunt, when she was doing a lot of political and, and fighting for 9-11 advocacy and helping to create a, a, safer, a, a safer United States and safer world. And she became burnt out from doing all of this lobbying in Congress and in DC and in New York. And so she decided to buy a boat and sail around the Caribbean and she called it Finding Neverland. And so it always brings me back to, she was always a kid at heart. Whenever she came over to our house, we were always doing playful things. We were going ice skating or skiing or uh, you know, going to museums, going to different things. And that's a way for me to remember her is always to be a kid. And so I always start every single post or finish every post with the hashtag finding Neverland because it just allows me to keep her spirit. Right. I love that. Is there, is there any other quotes or, or sayings that, that, that you find or that, or, you know, it could be right now. Cause I know my, I, yeah. right, it kind of changed. Anything well, you, the other hashtag you see me use a lot is outdoor fence, right? The yeah. power of being outside. <laughs> and, you know, you get this hit of endorphins, outdoorfins from being outside. During the pandemic, I live in a one-bedroom apartment in the city of Buffalo. So I was like, I need to get outside, especially when things were way more in lockdown, just to get that endorphins. And that's what even the November Project, get outside, go experience things, go for a walk, go for a run. Use that, the All Trails hiking app to find different trails or different paths in your, in your community that you can go check out. And that's where, you know, so then I'll get tagged on something like that. Someone will go out, go, go climb a mountain or go do something. And they'll, they'll tag me on there and be like, yo, Steve, outdoor fins. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> good work. Do steve um, <laughs> Yeah. So I, I really, you know, being outside is, is, is huge for me, especially in a world where it's really easy to stay inside. We have so many things that can keep us busy in, out inside and, and taking ourselves out into the world and going exploring. Because for me, when I get outside in nature, like I realize that I'm not the center of the universe. There's bigger things out there. And it's un the thing that's nice about nature, it's unpredictable. Inside of our apartments, there's so many things that are predictable. You go out in nature, you have animals, you have trees, you have wind, you have weather, all of these things that are out of your control. And that allows curiosity, your eyes to see new things, to take your attention off of what's ever going on in your life and put it on there. So for me, being outside is just, it's a huge staple of, I, you know, I have a couple of different bikes that I ride to go out there. I love being on trails. I love trying new different types of outdoor sports. And that's where yoga comes in. I feel like with yoga, I have a physicalness that gives me the ability to go try new things. And so even if they, someone doesn't want to dive into all the other elements and limbs of yoga, if you just did the yoga asana, the physical part, that's going to help you in any other forms of movement that you're doing. And that keeps life for me exciting. If I feel, so my other quote that I use a lot is be strong to be useful. The stronger you are physically and mentally, the more that you can help yourself and help others. Just like you going home to your parents. If you're strong physically and mentally, you can help out. My parents who my, I was just saying my, you know, as you know, my father's sick. They said, Stephen, can you shovel our walkway this winter? Got it. That's, that's, that to them creates less stress in their life that I am physically capable enough in the winter time to go to their house and shovel their driveway or help them move things or mentally being able to be there for them if they need something. So for me, I'm going to do the things in my life to be strong, to be useful, because to me, I can't just be a taker. If I just take all the time, then like, what am I doing here? Our, our role here is to be able to, yes, receive, 
but also to give. And the only way for me to do that is to be strong physically and mentally relative to myself. And now with your routine and you're talking about that you usually don't eat before you move. Yeah. Now, when you do decide to eat something, what are some of those foods that you have found maybe to be beneficial that you yeah. to you or that you usually include in your diet? Yeah. So my go-to lately is I've got huge into sprouts. <laughs> I love the microgreens. And like for me, it's like, how can I compact a lot of nutrients in a small, dense space? Because I've, 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 I've gone over the years, like I'm sure like you did, I crushed protein shakes for years. And I just, sometimes I get shaked out or juiced out. So a lot of times lately, I've been making more salads with microgreens. You know, I, I love researching about the blue zone. So in the blue zones, they say that the same, uh, the, the people that live the longest eat one cup of beans every single day, you know, whatever your dietary, you know, uh, perspective is, but the blue zones that live the longest, the one thing they have in common is mostly plant-based and they eat beans, uh, one cup of beans every single day. So lately I've just been switching up the beans too, as well with salads and things like that. And those have been my go-tos. I mean, I, I love kombucha. It's, it's yeah. you know, it's good. And I'm, I'm mostly plant-based, but I don't, I don't, uh, I don't take things too seriously. I love myself. I don't call things cheat days, but um, I eat the things that I want and I make just conscious decisions about it. And I won't let, I don't measure my food or count proteins or calories or anything like that. I just try to eat in a way that I think is the best way to nourish my body. And I don't make food wrong. If, if there's a cookie or anything like that, I'm going to eat it, but I, I'd love it to be a healthier version of a cookie. Like I'm not going to go to the store and get the processed ones. But if things are natural and stuff like that, like I'm okay with it. Right. You're from Buffalo, man. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. And I'm going to well, Buffalo. I'm going to enjoy yeah. myself. And then yeah. Well, I, 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 you know, I was vegan for I would say four or five years years ago, and it just became problematic for me to go to like Christmas dinner and Thanksgiving dinner and stuff. My parents were worried, like Stephen, what are you going to eat? So <laughs> I just I became a little bit more relaxed and said, dude, this is causing too much stress on my parents. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm just going to eat the cheese ravioli. It's fine. It's not going to hurt me. <laughs> and it, you know, my parents don't need to sweat that. I was like bringing my own food and stuff. And props to people that are. Right. But I, I, for me, I just, you know, I was like, okay, if I want to live inside of this, I'm going to make a little bit of a, a shift. And then I go back to my other routines that work for me. Man, I, I, I almost want to grab my camera and go to my kitchen because guess what I got growing in there? Oh, Mic sprouts? Micro greens and sprouts. Yeah. 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 And, and I, my, I remember my, you know, my, my dad, same thing with like, I have the big lights in my kitchen and stuff. And it's yeah. just the easy. How long have you been doing that for? Oh, for about four years now, I usually just keep them, keep them coming. And it's just the easy way to, to do it. It really doesn't take, I mean, uh, I, and I, my, I, my next guest actually that I talk to, to Sunday is a, is a, a, just a massive dude's got so much information about growing and soil. And so I'm, I'm super excited. Oh man, to I can't wait. Him. Oh my God. Yeah. He is. He, he, he's just like you. I got to sit honest. I'll, I'll, after I sit with him and talk with him, I'll sit in my car and take notes of what he just said. Cause yeah, it's crazy. But you, you know, when it comes to microgreens, there's like it's proven six to 12 times more nutrients yeah. in them. And why not? Cause it's, I don't have to eat the adult version of it. It's just a little bit of it, but it's super easy to do. And you know, it's expensive. Microgreens are, are not the cheapest. They're not cheap. No. And you and I aren't getting any younger. So for me, it's like, I, I'm trying, I'm 39 now. And I, I want to, my health insurance, like my, what I could, you know, we're all saving for retirement financially. Well, health retirement, like what am I putting, investing in myself in the bucket for my health retirement? And that's where things like microgreens and, and other natural products, I'm trying to use those as ways because like I want to, it's not how long I live, but how well that I live later in my life. Like I want to be doing great things into my 60s and 70s and still be doing all of that. And I'm going to, you know, continue like things like sprouts and putting or movement like yoga. Like I want to be mobile and agile. I want to be able to play with my grandkids and all these things. And if I don't start now and keep doing this, like you can't just decide at 50 or 60 to get that going. Could, might work. But right now, it's just I'm 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 gonna keep sticking on this path. And, just, and it sounds like the same thing. Like I've always been one to be like, okay, I I see that there's a benefit. Let me try it for myself. Yeah. And if it either works, I, I accept it and keep it in the rotation, or if not, I move on to other things. You know. 
And, and it's, I mean, man, damn, there must be something in our DNA because the same yeah. shit that you're saying. When I was 15, it, when I started working out in a freezing ass cold gym in Buffalo, you know, with my dad's weights, punching a punching bag and, and getting into it at a young right. age. And I have to ask you, and I've asked a couple of guests on here, do you feel that that you have this drive born in you or it's something that's kind of more experience or a, a bit of both? Well, it's a bit of both, but I also feel that you find something that clicks for you. And, and for us, I feel that it was movement. You know, like you didn't need to, I was outside playing every, you didn't have to push me out of the house to play sports. That could be playing an instrument for somebody else. That could be writing. That could be something else that clicked with you and I, and, and it, it's, it looks cool and sexy in the movement part and physicalness now, but whatever the thing is, it's what I tell people. It's like uh, gasoline, right? Like you, you light it on fire, it blows up. You put it in a car, it runs for days. Like you and I just needed to f like take the gasoline of, of our personalities and our drive and put it into something. And for you and I, it was forms of movement is one of the factors of that. So for, for others, I think that we were just very lucky that it's very easy to jump into sports and movement at an early age, at least where we grew up. Oh, yeah. and, and so if somebody else can find that, that thing for what them is for what it is for them at an early age, then they're well on their way. And I, I feel like we're very lucky. Yes, we do have a family that's very driven, but we have also have great role models. Our parents were great role models to us of, I don't know if this happened to you, but you know, you had to, you had to, I, we had to earn everything that you know you know we weren't going to be given anything out of we were taken care of with our you know uh, the basic necessities and everything else was need to be earned so you had to we had to work hard oh yeah mother used to say money burns a hole in eric's pocket and she'd give me that allowance i'd spend it up and then my brothers would have a pair of snow skis and a bike and i was like oh shit <laughs> you know yeah yeah everything earned and i'm sure that probably came from that from, from, from our, our grandmother that we talked about and all having 15 kids yeah. and all that and, and working hard for that because I, I know that that, that's, that that side of the family, I mean, shoot, if you just Google Procknell, a lot of athletes come up and stuff. And so well, you got West Point in there. I mean, you got yeah. some military I awards. Yeah. I always, I, and the best thing about our name too, and I always and I say to people is, you know, if it's a Procknell, it's, it's re, he's, they're related to me. Somehow, yeah. somewhere down the line, you know, it's not like a Smith or a Jones. Yeah. And, you know, while I got got you on here, Steve, like a lot of people and a lot of feedback that I've been getting from, you know, friends and family and then other people commenting and they've, there's been one that's been coming up a lot and it's been, you know, what about those people that really don't like exercising and they're at, for advice, and I wanted to ask you about that. And so what advice would you give to somebody that really doesn't like, you know, they want to take care of their health. They just kind of despise it. They don't really like it. Um, you know, what, what would you have to say to them about that? Well, what I would say is, can you change the word? It doesn't need to be called working out because you use the word work. You take that out. Just talk about movement. Just go move your body. If you don't like picking up weights or if you don't want to go to the gym or something like that, maybe walk to go grab your coffee or take the stairs uh, instead of taking the elevator. Whatever those things, find little ways to add movement because even once again, to looking at the blue zones, the people that live the longest, they're not ripped. They don't have some sort of like bulk. They're just people that movement is part of their day. And so whether they walk to the store or they, um, you know, their job involves doing movement. If you don't love the, like the organized exercise that involves 30 minutes or 60 minutes, that's fine. Find something that you can do that you enjoy, because if it's not easy and you don't like doing it, it's just not, it's not going to be long-term, you know, obviously, you know, sometimes there's going to be days where you don't enjoy it. And though, can you find something that you enjoy? It could be dancing. It could be walking with friends. Um, find the thing. There's so much information out there. Find something that gives you the ability. Once again, just getting outside. Go find new trails. What I love to do, so I, I was used to be trained for triathlons and marathons, and I was all time-oriented. Now when I go run somewhere, I take photos. And I don't care that I have to stop and my time won't be as good. 
go <laughs> use movement in your body to go find cool places and maybe take photos. You like photography, go somewhere new. If, if you know, you want to just go on an adventure, go ask one of your friends to go somewhere and go to that place, go walk around, do those types of things. That way you're using your body. And yeah, if you want to do a little bit of physical, um, you know, more strength based things, I, I always think it's a great idea to add some sort of weights or maybe some sort of body movement, but you might only need to do that for 15 to 20 minutes, a couple times a week to, to help yourself out. So don't make it too complicated and do the things that you really enjoy and be creative. There's not one way. There's not just that like, this is the plan to live the longest. There's so many. And, and truthfully, you and I, we don't know if we're doing it the right way. We're trying our best, <laughs> you know, but it's not like we 100% know. I feel right. pretty good about what I'm doing. Yeah, Bruce Lee died when he was 32 and he was the baddest man on the planet, you know? Yeah. And I remember reading a lot of stuff and, he, and his father, he just talked to him about that he didn't do enough of the, the relaxing part of it. Yeah, he did Tai yeah. Chi and yoga and that, but not to balance yeah. out all the, 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 hundred miles an hour they said they used to be yeah. constantly yeah. and yeah. I think do something that do something that 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 allows you to have fun enjoy yourself i used to have a triathlon coach that he would say for my long runs and long rides he said steve go out go somewhere new and and just go do it for a couple hours and i never listened to him because i was like what do you mean we're gonna we, we gotta measure this you know <laughs> i gotta have my my score and he's a person that is a lifelong he loves movement and it didn't land for me till later on in life that yeah, just uh, sometimes it's just good to just go have fun because then you also get the stress relief too as well, which is so important because I know that I don't do movement to add more stress into my life. So if I'm only results oriented or it has to be a certain way or I, it has to be a certain way so quickly, that's a losing game. You know, the long game, I would assume for you, for yourself and me is like, dude, I just want to be healthy, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, if I end up looking good, fantastic. <laughs> And though it's, it's not, it's not the end goal anymore. I mean, so I used to work out to, you know, go out to the bars and all that stuff. And this is like, let me get a shirt that looks good going out. <laughs> and now, man, I just want to be healthy and happy. And then, and then also it opens me up to share that with others, because if I'm just trying to be way more like ego driven, then it's so closed off. And, and just like with things, November project, look, I'm just a person that's standing up in front helping guide the workout, but I, I, I'm not better than anybody else. I'm just here to, to share some things that I love. And that's why at the end of a November project workout, they almost feel like they didn't even really, like we did a workout, but people were just moved, moving their bodies in ways. So I think if you look at kids and how they move and what they do, find creative ways the same way kids would do something and do that. I mean, you could be painting, it doesn't really matter. There's so many ways for, you, for us to use our bodies. And, and be creative with it. You, you'll be surprised at how much you'll get from it. Yeah, you know, I mean, just in your, your, your posts and stuff and your pictures where you'll be all different places and, you know, it, it shows a lot of people and being the November project in different places and to make it more fun. And you're on the steps of uh, some very historical buildings and beautiful buildings. And the next place you're, you know, you're at the, um, what is it the uh the, with all the plants and stuff that are not the arboretum uh I'm trying to think of the albright knox yes the art gallery yeah. yeah yeah so those i mean just beautiful places and i mean the just the atmosphere there and then through your facebook and social media you'll be at like you we were just talking about lecherous state park and and so i love seeing that because it does show people all the different avenues to to take the fit and then to make it fun like you stated and I mean, it definitely comes out on your, I mean, to have that energy, Steve, that you have where it's just, it, it's so, I mean, when I'm on just seeing your posts, just reading your comments and the little things that you do, I mean, that's a very powerful thing because, you. you know, to, to not just be on the phone with you and talk to you or talking to you one-on-one -on -one like that right now, but just those things that you're putting out there. I mean, I'm not the only one I see that before, but. I love it. It is just so motivating for me and it inspires me. And some of the things I've already taken from you and used from you have changed my life and for the better. And just that small amount that I've had with you. So um, I just want to thank you so much, man. It's, it's, it's awesome that your blood runs through I know, me. I know, man. It's, it's so it's, good. <laughs> it is ridiculous. I mean, I, and, and that girl that I, that I ran into and she, and she just, it, the first thing in her mind, she's like, how do you not, 
how do you guys not know each other? You know? I know, and so, I know. But he's like, he is just like you. And yeah. so, um, man, I, I do appreciate everything. And I'm sure every, the city of Buffalo and to see you on the news and stuff, talk about it, even their interviews with, with you. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of the, the interviewer, but I've known her since shit when I was young and of her being on the news. And I mean, just her sitting with you, Steve, she felt your energy. And she even was, she was grateful and thankful that what you were doing and putting out there and she realized it just in that few minutes with you and I, myself, man. And so I want to thank you so much. And I, I appreciate your time I sitting down with me. I know you're a busy man and um, I'm not, I love not too busy that I can't sit down with some blood, man. So, <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate what you're doing from afar and I get to see you sharing what you do with your clients and, and you taking also, what we've learned and raised in this city of Buffalo and then you get to bring it to other cities and people feel that they see that and it's so genuine. So I, I appreciate and acknowledge for who you are and what you do. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. And Steve, I would love to get you back on here, man, because I know that I could sit here and talk to you for hours, but yeah. <laughs> there's so many, and I'm, I, I got, I already got, a, a, we didn't even hit half of it, man. Yeah. It's all <laughs> I right. checked out we a couple done. things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Steve, bud, Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks and for having me. Enjoy your weekend, man. I'll talk to you soon, okay? All, All right. right. Thanks for having me on, everybody. Bye, Eric. Bye.